get things started off, I have a scenario on the board here of a couple, husband and wife, all right? Income is 8,244 per month, expenses 7,244. Their expenses do vary. Okay, so their cash flow is going to vary. I, you know, anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 is what they're working with right now. Um, when we first started talking, their debt was a little bit higher than what you see at the uh, 243,000. We've, we've done some work already um, up until this point, November 2019. This is where we're at right now. We have a HELOC, unsecured 25,000 uh, at 5.5 percent. And these are the remaining debts that they have. They're, this is their mortgage, 173,000. $898.42, and then that's the payment, that's the interest rate. This is a second mortgage on the same property for $57,313.37, and then the monthly payment, four thirty-five. dollars And then the last thing is their, their last student loan. We wiped out the other ones. The final one is um, just around ten k owed. Payment is $538.07 per month and the interest rate is at 7%. So I believe that once this is wiped out, they'll officially be at a 1500 cash flow. But like I said, th this is a family where their stuff kind of fluctuates and there are some factors right now. The, the husband is not working for the next um, two months, but I do believe he ha is being paid time off. Uh, but I'm not sure if it's gonna be for the whole duration so we're actually going to be a little conservative in terms of our uh, aggressiveness with velocity banking and infinite banking. So a couple of moves looking at this side is our very first move that we did um, was prior to working with me, they had two variable uh, life insurance policies, I believe with uh, Catholic Life, I think is the company. And either it's a variable or a whole life, I forget. But um, it was one on wife, one on husband. And what we did was we looked at wife because she was the healthier individual. Um, and we kept husbands in place. So we're actually going to keep paying for his policy. We're not going to try and switch to an infinite banking policy. We did try, but he did get denied. So when we went with wife, she got ultra preferred, so she's healthier and younger. Um, what we did with her existing policy is we did a reduced paid up on it where we no longer pay any more premiums to that and that cash flow is gonna get redirected back to the HELOC, which is gonna help us chunk towards the new policy. So she has about 10K in cash value, all right, and to start the new policy, what we did was we borrowed 8,000 from existing policy and then took a chunk out of this HELOC, which is at a zero balance right now, took a chunk of 8,500 from the HELOC for a total of 16,500. The premium is $1,911.50 and their MEC limit is $20,001.96. 48-year-old female, this is with Mass Mutual. Starting cash value will be th uh, somewhere a little over thirteen thousand seven hundred bucks, which we are going to going into our third move is once we've done that, which she did already. So first move and second move is already done as of November twenty nineteen. The third move is borrowing from the new policy ten k to pay off the student loan. So we're going to go ahead and wipe out this student. We're going to stuff. That so we're going to save on that 7%. So we're going to save maybe a thousand, two thousand or more on in interest here um, over the long haul of it. The 53807 is going to get redirected to the HELOC first, which then will pay back our policy loan. So we're going to have a loan on the new policy for 10K. We have a loan on the existing policy for 8K. The interest on that policy i forget what their loan interest rate is versus their dividends um, but 
I think no matter what, they'll be able to retain. We're not going to actually have any loss over here, which is good, and no loss over here. Now, with Mass Mutual, when it comes to taking out policy loans, uh, Mass Mutual is a non-direct recognition. So basically what that means is when I take out a policy loan, Mass Mutual is not recognizing that I took out a policy loan. They're going to continue to pay me my four to six and a half percent on all of the money as if I didn't borrowed in the first place. So I'm still going to earn my guaranteed rate on all the the amount of money that I put in that new policy account. And then when I borrow from it, the loan interest rate, I believe is like somewhere right now in between five and 6%. So we're going to, we're going to be ch getting charged interest on 10,000 on the mass mutual, the new policy. And the way the interest works with mass mutual is that it's calculated uh, daily. So interest will accrue daily. With Guardian, you, you pay the interest up front. Okay? But with mass mutual, it's calculated daily. So it needs time to accrue. Whereas Guardian is a annual simple interest charge. Um, so, first move, we turn the existing policy and reduce paid up, gain some cash flow there, started a new policy, borrowing from the old one and the HELOC, 16.5. My premium is 19.11.50. So, she has the ability to put in more money, um, and we are planning on funding this. Look at my notes. Think about a from age 48 to maybe 60, and she can go a little longer if she wanted to. Um, but every year with Mass Mutual, currently, whatever you initially say you're gonna do, that's the number that is it. With Guardian, if I wanted to start with X and then fund a certain amount later on, I, could, I can do that. But with Mass Mutual, as of right now, from what I know, um, they only let you fund it one time, and then if you want to fund more, you have to wait to the anniversary date of the policy. But I do believe that some changes will be made soon with Mass Mutual to actually improve on the flexibility. Okay. Um, and then the final fourth move is to simply do velocity banking on the HELOC, sending all my income taking out expenses out of the HELOC and trying to maximize on cash flow each and every month. Really try not to spend too much, not try to waste. Um, you know, husband's out of work right now, had surgery. So we want to kind of just do velocity banking, do our thing and not overspend, maximize on cash flow. The goal is to bring the HELOC to zero as fast as possible because the very next move going into next year, we have a bit of a window period in terms of either option one, just simply chunking back at the policies, right? That could be option one is when the HELOC hits zero to use the HELOC again to chunk at both policies to, to zero them out. The option two is to basically keep that debt that we shifted over here leveraged, don't pay it back, and actually chunk at the second mortgage here using the HELOC. So option two could be to chunk at their second mortgage and keep policy loans outstanding. Have to run the math on that to see what, what is um, the better route mathematically. Um, what ends up happening is if I chunk back at these policies, I'm gonna stop using this one pretty much. Uh, and then I'm going to do, an, I'm gonna structure another chunk from here of probably 10K again 
So whether I put it right back in, I'm just going to take it right back out to simply uh, wipe out this bad debt right here. And at some point, what we want to do when we're doing this infinite banking, when we're dealing with people who are in debt of quite a bit, is we do actually want to keep policy loans in the beginning years of the policy. We do actually want to just keep them there so that we can actually leverage this money, paying this debt, and then also leveraging the bank's money to pay even more debt. We're, we're kind of having more leverage to wipe out all that bad debt as fast as possible. And then as soon as we've gotten rid of the bad debt, now we have the debt on our policy loans, which we're cool with having because once we restore them, I would have still have been earning money on all of the cash value, you know? And really my primary focus would be to, you know, uh, max fund the policies each year. So I keep them out, I keep some money outstanding. I don't want to borrow all of it of money. I don't want to borrow all of it. About 66% would probably be the max I'll go um, each year. And understand that 66 is going to keep growing for me, especially if I, the second year around, if I dump in 19K according to my, my premium to have that, you know, 90-10 split there. But um, if I just focus on, if I keep max funding the account, then I'm going to stay ahead of the interest that is getting calculated on these policy loans which I'm cool with having. I don't want to have them for too long, right? So that's why we do velocity banking to cut down that debt, the bad debt timeline to about maybe three to four years. So if I have interest getting charged over here for about three to four years, which ends up being zero cost because of what I'm earning versus over here, I'm offsetting that cost, the HELOC cost because I'm recouping a bunch of interest and a bunch of cash flow, then I'm cool with, you know, having that debt over there, doing velocity banking over here, having it going, doing, doing the math, uh, figuring out ways to increase cash flow even higher and just, you know, keep really uh, engaged and keep learning more. And uh, we should be able to get the results that we want for this family right here. As soon as husband goes back to work, it'll feel a lot better. I know that they're like, you know, hey, we're going to you know, take a little easy. That's why I was like, all right, let's just, let's just do this one little move right here. Move 10K right over here to the policy. Leave that alone. Leave the policy alone. Just do Velocity Bank on the HELOC from November to about <clears throat> February, March 2020. As soon as it comes to zero, you can either chunk at the policies be done with them, right? Which you're just going to take that money right back out and throw at debt. Or option two, HELOC hit zero. Keep those loans. Don't pay them back. Keep them outstanding. Option two, chunk at second mortgage, 66% of $25,000, which would be sixteen five, right? sixteen five is what we would go ahead and chunk at this debt and do velocity banking from March 2020 all the way up until the anniversary date. Did I spell anniversary right? I hope so. Anniversary, yep, anniversary date of, I think they started their policy between September and October. I did not, don't have that information in front of me. But their mass mutual, right, anniversary date, is somewhere towards the end of the year, I think between September and October. Um, so when, once we approach it, we should be at zero on the HELOC. Instead of paying back the policy loans, I'm going to make a chunk to the new funding period, that second year. I'll either do 16.5. If my cash flow is much higher, I might do like maybe 19. If I can go from 25 to, I don't know, 
give me like a 10k increase go from 25 to 35 that that increases my chunk capability a little bit more right so by next year i would definitely want to get an increase on the heloc especially if i'm knocking down a bunch of debt on the property itself and i'm continuing to make the monthly payment each and every month that monthly payment some money's going towards interest so that equity is you know still building up and so in the option two the policy loans would have stayed outstanding but you would have put in another sixteen five to nineteen thousand in new money which is going to earn four to six and a half percent on all the money still which i would then take out a chunk from that new money a portion not all of it but a new chunk and throw it at more debt meanwhile by september october 2020 i'll owe between 16 and 19k on the heloc and i'll just do velocity banking bring it to zero get ready to chunk again on that second mortgage the goal is to try to have that wiped out by 2021 like midway and we could do that through the uh, option two by by keeping loans outstanding over here basically what i'm doing is i'm sending this 4.2 percent i'm sending all this money over to ibc to actually earn money even though i'm using it right so that's what i that's that's all i'm going to be doing those first couple of years that first three or four years and then as soon as we're out of debt then my main focus is just restoring back to zero keep max funding and then creating a plan got to create a plan for the money we got we got to give our uh money purpose create a plan for the money after you're debt free right what you don't want to do is just say, oh, yeah, Denzel, um, now I'm debt free, wonderful, life's good, and uh, I'm just going to, you know, save my money in my life insurance policy and call it a day. I'm just going to do that for the rest of my life. No, no, no. We want to give your money purpose. We want to give your money a place to store it safely so it can grow tax free. But you also want to give that money purpose give it somewhere to go to whether it's in another investment property whether it's in a nonprofit, whether it's in a business whether it's in your kids businesses whatever it is you want to just give that money purpose do not let the money sit and do nothing even though it's sitting in a great account such as a high cash value life insurance policy and it's earning money and it's building your death benefit building your cash value has all those features still you want to give that money more purpose and have it operate even better outside of the account because it's going to operate a hell of a lot better if it than it just sitting there and just growing okay